Hello and welcome to Chicken Bros. My name is David Heath. Third. <laughs> Third. And we're here to talk about Disney Pixar's newest, uh, I was going to say masterpiece, but not everything you do is a masterpiece. Newest movie, Lightyear. Which I was not excited for for a couple of reasons. The main which being it was not Tim Allen as Buzz, but uh, Chris, Chris Evans. Evans which yeah. wasn't a terrible choice. It's just, Tim is my buzz, you know? Yeah. Also, it wasn't following the plot of Star Command, which was kind of jarring for me, because that's the only, you know, media of Buzz Lightyear that I know outside of the Toy Story movies. Right. And I never watched Star Command, so... But, um, basically, to explain how this movie works, it's... A movie that exists in the Toy Story universe that Andy saw when he was a kid and he wanted the toy of on his birthday, thus yeah. leading us into it the first Toy Story. It starts with like a have a, like some dialogue that says, In nineteen ninety five a boy named Andy saw a movie about his favorite hero, Buzz Lightyear. This is that movie. Yeah. And um it started immediately with them on that plan like landing on that planet. And, yeah, uh, Buzz Lightyear's like, like Buzz Lightyear mission log. We've landed on this planet, and like his friends, like, are you narrating? Uh, no, no, I wasn't. You always narrate the logs. You don't know who's gonna listen to them, right? I know narrating helps me focus. I'll give Chris Evans this. He talks like Buzz Lightyear would talk. He does. He does a really good job. And... You're mocking me, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I love that he said that, and he said it exactly like Buzz Lightyear. You're mocking me, aren't you? <laughs> and um, I, you notice um, almost immediately that Buzz, for some reason, doesn't like you know rookies. Well, I don't, like a lot of people don't like rookies. Like I don't like rookies when I play Mortal Kombat because they don't know the rules of the game. They don't know how, they don't have the same long hard hours that I put in. You know. Well, yeah, but everybody's gonna start somewhere. Yeah, just not with me. <laughs> okay, Buzz. Um. But while they're on this planet, they realize that there's some sort of weird uh, creature in the grounds with tentacles. Ugh. Japanese porn artists don't get any ideas. <laughs> oh, you know they will. Um, it starts trying to drag them down and dragging their ship down, so they try to quickly get back. Um, but... uh, it's, it's like, and Buzz is like, Buzz is that cool, confident, cocky asshole. Sorry, but it's true. Yeah, he really he does start do that everything way. himself. He really thinks he can do everything himself. Yeah. And, like, and he's, that's what... he's trying to like take off by himself. And the rookie's like, Mr. Commander Lightyear, do you need my help? No, I can do this. And he he almost makes it. He's off by like a like a, like a foot. And then like... He like, crashes the ship. The and... turnip, as he calls it. Oh, now it's a turnip. And they're stuck there. Yep. And like he's beating himself up about it. Like, oh man, if I had just... <sighs> it's... You know, I think it's a good thing that he kind of, like, realized that, yeah, man, if he'd let the rookie help you, you might have gotten out. Yeah. But, um, his friend, uh, oh, what was her name? Alicia. Alicia Hawthorne. Yeah, Alicia Hawthorne, uh, who's a fellow ranger, um, is like, we can do this. We can finish the mission. And, um, so basically their plan is to make a new, like, fuel source, which is like a crystallized, um, that's a crystal. Yeah. Yeah, and it's used as their fuel source, and they're trying to find the right combo combination. Of stuff. Yeah, to make so they crystal. can achieve hyperspeed and get off the planet. So, yeah. looking back on it, why do they need hyperspeed to get off the planet? Exactly. Uh, why can't they just repair the ship and? I think hyper, fly off. I, th I think they need hyperspeed to just in general. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe. They, maybe. I think maybe like they're finding the materials to make the crystal on that planet. Yeah, they are. Yeah, so maybe that's why they're doing it because, like, they want to. They want to try to find the right combination, but if they, they, need, I, I'm assuming they just need hyperspeed, like in general. Mm -hmm. So they have Buzz test out every combination, and what they find out is that every time he goes into hyperspeed, like the faster he goes, the more time, pa like time passes for him, like it's just a few seconds or a few, a few minutes, but for them, it's years. So he's yeah. out there in space testing out one crystal. It doesn't work, and he, he does land back on the planet. And for him, it's just yeah. been a few minutes, but to them, it's, it's been four years. Like four years. So he keeps 
doing that and doing that and his friend gets older and older and yeah. i was like no don't you dare i yeah. know what you're doing don't you dare yeah, he's so hell-bent on finishing the mission that he wants to like keep doing it until he finds the right way but like oh, also his friend is a lesbian she gets engaged to then married to this woman and they are adorable by the way yes suck it disney um yeah screw you disney <laughs> um so yeah, yeah, her life is going on and he's missing all of it. He's just like, here, okay, I'm back. Okay, time to go to the next ship. Gone for four more years. Oh, I'm back. Nope, gotta go again. <sighs> missing all this. Like he sees like they're like she's pregnant, that their kids growing up and that they're graduating. They have their 40th anniversary. All this is happening. And then one day he comes back. She's not there. Her office is completely empty. All yep, that's left is a little it. hologram device and it shows her in a hospital bed. I was like, damn you. Damn you, Pixar! <laughs> they'll be they'll be back in a few years, but I won't be. Yeah, and then like, yeah, it's, it's like time caught up with her. It's just just like it's starting to hit I him a, in the face. I had a life here, and like I I, I like it when um, she introduces uh, her granddaughter Izzy. She's like, hmm. I'm gonna be a space ranger, just like him, just like you. <laughs> and then and then she and then she had to so. The, the, uh, Buzz and Alicia do this thing. This is where the phrase came from. Where, where, where they stick out their fingers. They go to infinity and beyond, and poof. just touch. Yeah, and then like she ended the message by sticking out her finger, going to infinity, and he goes and beyond. And I was like, "Damn it, Pixar! How dare you make me cry over to infinity and beyond? I cried, <laughs> dude. I fucking it's terrible. I mean, not terrible. It's good and emotional, but like, damn it. And then like this new guy comes in. Uh, I don't remember his name. Uh, it was something... It was honestly something like really cool and slick and shit. Yeah, he comes in and he's his plan isn't to get off. It's just to like stay put and like it's just build, build a, a laser, laser wall. Shield, laser shield. Um, but Buzz is like, no, we got to finish the mission. This is what she worked so hard for and like all that stuff. And oh, by the way, I, I forgot to mention that while Buzz was gone one of the times, she got him... Uh, a cat companion named Socks. Which, by the way, is the name of one of Bill Clinton's cats hmm. when he was in office. I did not know that. But he was allergic. Just like me! I, um... So Buzz, throughout the movie, hates, like, um... Automated, uh... He hates AI, he hates rookies... He like, he like he hates robots that try to do stuff for you. Like, is there anything I can assist you with, Mister Lightyear? Yeah. Um, but socks. While he is kind of that, he's different because he kind of has a sense of um, I don't want to say emotion, but like he's got like a sense of humanity to him, kind of. Even though he's a robot, yeah. he's not like he's not just an artificial intelligence. He is, but I mean, like, he's not just a computer. He's Yeah, he's got emotion. He's got sympathy. Yeah. Whereas, like, if you told, like, an AI, I had a bad day today, it's like, redirecting you to the nearest therapist or something like that. Yeah. Whereas Socks would go, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Buzz. Would you like what to talk can about I... it? And yeah, like, would you like to talk about it? It's like, Socks isn't a computer, he's a friend. Yeah, he's not a computer, he's a companion. And while Buzz has constantly been going back and forth to the missions trying to test out the crystals, he's had Socks look at it because Socks is like, I can probably figure this out. And, you know, Buzz, <laughs> Buzz not realizing how special Socks is yet, is like, yeah, okay. And at this point, Socks comes to Buzz and says, I figured out the crystal thing, Buzz. We, like, it, was... it only took me about 66 years, 5 months, and 4 seconds. Yeah, and then, like, he finds out that there's a, a very workable, like, a very, like, it's, it's like, 82% success. And then... i take those odds. Some people from Star Command are, like, they got to decommission uh, socks, and Buzz is, like, Yeah, because least, it's it, a whole... Yeah, it's a whole They're decommissioning the whole now. program. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, just let me do it. And then they close the door and they hear, <laughs> bust through the window and they're gonna hijack the ship. Um... And then, like, he, he makes the crystal mixture and, like, creates the crystal, but he ends up destroying that computer that told him the readout, so that's the only one. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, shit, that's going to be important. Um, so he gets on the ship and takes off against Captain's orders, and he tests it, and he goes full hyperspeed, like, 100%. And it was a kind of, it was really visually cool seeing all the, like, stuff out in space, like, all that. Yep. And then he lands back on the planet, except this time it's way different. 
Yeah, it's been 22 years. And, like, I love how when he got out of the ship, his th- he says, Star Command, do you read me? Star Command. Star- Why you copy? Answer? Why don't they answer? <laughs> and then um, somebody comes out, comes around and tells Buzz to get down, and they see these robots yep. tag the ship, essentially. Go, Zerg. <laughs> Zerg. The person who um, te- uh, uh, got Buzz to get down was um, Izzy, the Alicia's granddaughter. <laughs> and he's like, Socks, how long have we been gone? 22 years. And I'm like, ugh. And so she has a plan to... So there's a robot ship with robots on it. And they showed up and has trapped everybody there. Yep. And they needed Buzz to be the pilot to help them get up there, destroy the ship, and decommission the robots. Yep. Operation Surprise. Surprise. Party. But the problem is that her crew is way unexperienced. Yeah. Because there's her, who's a, a star, space ranger hopeful, but she has astrophobia. Mm-hmm. You got a quitter. Yeah. Played by Korg. Got this old character who I honestly can't tell was a man or a woman. woman. I honestly can't tell. Woman. Okay. And she, I guess, is a convict. Yeah. I, I can't handle a weapon. A few years off my sentence. <laughs> I can't handle a weapon. It violates my parole. <laughs> I love that the quitter was voiced by the guy who played Korg in the Thor movies. Hey, man. <laughs> and um, the one of the robots. Do I need comes... a pen? <laughs> yeah, I love that th- the thing with the pen. That was awesome. Uh, uh, and one of the robots comes by and tries to grab Buzz, and they they eventually get loose, but it was all very. Miss, it, it did not go as well as it could have. Didn't go well? Did I get him? Pretty close. And Buzz, realizing that these guys are ro- not even I'm rookies, tr- they're like trainees, is like, <laughs> okay, I need to do this on my own. You guys just stay here. And they try to take him to where there's a ship uh, stored away. And uh, I think it was like... Those weird, like, bug creatures that flew around were, like, in mm. there. And he had to... Yeah, it's like they're hibernating. Oh, good thing for that. Yeah. And and uh, he, he and Sock tried to get to the ship, but, like... The others just pop in. Yeah, they popped... Well, they, they followed him because he had the keys to the truck that brought him there. And then they got trapped into that room where they had the ranger suits. Yep. And so they all got suited up in ranger suits. And then Buzz told them, okay, <laughs> and, look... Um... The quitter got uh, the suit of the rookie from the beginning of the movie with the really hard name. Yeah, fa- 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 <laughs> the rookie. Yeah, the rookie. And so Buzz tells him, "Okay, if you press this button, you'll go, you'll cloak, and then you guys go that way, and I'll go this way." And they do that, and Buzz gets the ship loaded with the with the crystal and ready to go. But then he realizes that there's a timer on the cloaking thing, and he forgot to tell them. Oh crap! For the timer. Yeah, and then so. Yeah, they're visible again, and all the bugs start coming after them, and they... Okay, so... Like... Social, we're visible again. <laughs> Good reference. So, so, this was this is what threw me off, kind of. That little red button in the center there was... You pull the thing, yeah. and, like, the, the... the That... Whatever that was. It's like, quitter, it's like the quitter mode. Yeah, it's like a big expand... It's kind of like an airbag, kind of. Yeah. Or, or a raft. And they used it to roll past the bugs and get to the ship. Yep. And, um... Buzz is like, "Why did you come this way?" He's like, "We had to get we had to get away from the bugs." But you could have made it if if you told us that the cloaking thing had a timer. Okay, fair. Yeah, and so they all get away on that ship, and um, at that point, another ship finds them and starts shooting at them. Mm-hmm. It's Zerg. Um, Z- and then they Zerg damages the ship only slightly. They need a coil to get it working again, so they. They go to like this faction that's like, I don't know if it's, it's like, my company. Yeah. My. And so they go in there and find the coil and like, I like that little moment they had when they were having like snacks in the break room. Yeah. Bread, bread, meat, bread. That's too much bread. Yeah. <laughs> the sandwiches were the other way around. Meat, bread, meat. Which, I gotta be honest, I'm curious to try a sandwich that way. I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to try to have a ham sandwich that way next time I get the chance. Um, And I like that little conversation he had with Izzy, which is that, like, he, he 
said something about like he failed the mission he ruined their life ruined her life and she's like no Buzz she had a life she got to live it but you didn't and you know it's it's starting to really come to him now yeah and he and he also realizes that he's kind of been hard on them because yeah oh bad joke but you're the king of the academy wait fucking damn it so um uh they try to get back to the ship and then I think from there I think the, the robots came and attacked and then stole the power the, they stole the crystal yep and so Buzz is like completely given up like there's nothing he can do now they got the crystal there's no way off it was kind of Izzy's fault but hey everyone makes mistakes right right yeah and um Zerg catches Buzz and takes him back to his ship to which Buzz discovers the horrible truth I am your father no I'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> they, they tried though they, they referenced that, that though they, like whoever like Zerg the robot is like a robot being manned by a person in this Kind of Iron Monger esque. Yes, actually, very Iron Monger esque. Now that I think about it, and then it opens, and then you see who it is, and then he, Buzz is like, "Dad, <laughs> try again." And it turns out, and I don't know how to feel about this, but it's Buzz, but older and from a different timeline. Really, everyone everyone's trying to do different timelines nowadays. In Marvel, it made sense, but here we didn't need it. I'll say this, it's kind of interesting because of something that happens later in the movie, but I'll get to that. But basically, Older Buzz says that he got the hyperspace to work, and then when he came back, what's his name? Mr. Laser Shield was going to decommission right. him, and then he ran off and then came back to exact his revenge. And Basically, he wants to just make up for that one mistake he made. He's, he's still hung up on it, but our Buzz is, start, is in the process of getting over it. And also, he yeah. says that he managed to go not just forward in time with the crystals, but backward, and that he can use the crystal that Buzz, our Buzz, has to go back and fix their original mistake, which was getting them marooned on that planet. But our mm -hmm. Buzz is like, but wait, if you do that, that means that Alicia will never have met her wife, never have her kid or granddaughter. He's like, but we won't, but you realize that we won't have made that mistake. We wouldn't have ruined her life. And like, you know. That's when it clicks for our buzz. Like, yeah, it's like she got to have a life, but we didn't. And I remember the, there was a slight reference when old Buzz's socks says "Buzz," and they would go, "Yes, yes." <laughs> oh yeah, That's yeah. Reference from the second movie. Oh yeah, I can't believe I missed that. Um, but uh, Buzz, try, our Buzz is like, I'm not doing this, and then so our the old Buzz tries to like. Just do it by force. Yep. Like if you're not going to be part of this, then you're just I'm going to have to just deal with you later. And so what's funny is that old Buzz's socks gets our Buzz out of it. He's like, I bought you five minutes. <laughs> I bought you five minutes. I like I like this new you. So Buzz tries to get the crystal out of there. Uh, Izzy and them found out a way to because the Zerg robots have this thing that if you tap it, it sends it right back to the ship. And Basically, yeah. Izzy realizes that one of it was on their ship, so they use it to get on the Zerg ship to get Buzz out. Yep. And um, so they fight their way through. <laughs> um, they try to. I actually liked that scene when Izzy had to cross from one end of the ship to the other. Yep, to the vastness of space. Yeah. She did pretty well. Yeah, good for her. Um, and Buzz is fighting Zerg. All that shit's going on. And uh, they managed to get they managed to get uh, pretty close to getting out, but like I think that um, the self destruct happened a little too soon, and then Buzz was like flying out in space, and the, there the Izzy and her crew were in the ship, but it didn't have the crystal in it, so he had to go and save them. Yep. <laughs> and of course, Zerg is following Buzz, trying to tear apart his ship. He's like, yep. and he, I don't remember, he said something, and then goes, prepare to die, and then Buzz zoots out of the ship and goes, not today, sir! Not today, sir! And blasts him. That's where the, uh, his, um, eject button basically was the wings that we know and love. Yep. Which is interesting. Which I love. And, um, he saves Izzy and the crew. There's a little, like, latch inside the ship that got stuck with the cover like I need something like a like a paper clip or something small like a and then the guy's like a pen 
<laughs> he finally got to use his pen. Yeah, because he was spending the whole episode like, anyone need a pen? <laughs> and then uh, they land safely. And Buzz... See, this, so this is what I was talking about earlier when, uh, what's his name, Laser Shield guy comes and catches Buzz. He's like, Buzz, you went up against direct orders of your captain. I should have you in the brig, but you saved us. <clears throat> and uh, like, I'm willing to grant you the rank of Space Ranger again with an experienced crew. And then they have all those guys like they're ready to fight in armor. He's like, yep, yep. thank you, sir, but I already have my crew. And he's talking about them. <laughs> yep. Uh, so I need, I need, I need an alien princess, a robot, and the janitor. <laughs> I'm guessing that's Star Command. That Star Command reference, yeah. yeah. So th that that was what I was talking about, like with um, the different timelines. Because like I feel like if old Buzz had stuck around, maybe that would have happened, but he just jumped to conclusions. Mm -hmm. So, like, oh, that's interesting. So only Buzz having gone through what he'd been through wouldn't help him learn to just, you know. So that's, yeah. That's interesting. Um, and then, so they all get decked out in these, like, really cool Space Ranger outfits that look a lot closer to the Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. Like yep. It had a slightly different coat of paint on it than the other ranger suits. And um, so they get ready to take on the ship and they go to infinity and beyond. And <laughs> So did, uh, did you stick around for the end credit scenes? I, all three of them, yeah. There were three? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there was... Um... Or they, they one were of the, them was uh, the guy just sitting in his office and goes, <laughs> yeah. laser shield. Laser, well, yeah. Uh, there was that one. The one where Zerg was still alive. This is, yeah, the Zerg's still alive one. And then I swear there was one more. Hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't remember. I don't but um, Lightyear, I, I, I liked it. I did too. I just didn't like it as much hmm. solid eh, seven out of ten i'll give it a eight out of ten and you know what's interesting is that like <laughs> i could you know the, the the effect of the movie must have worked so well on andy because now i want a buzz light your toy <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and i turn my back it's gonna come alive and think it's a real space ranger <laughs> yep the word I'm searching for, I can't say it because there's peace codes always present. <laughs> so, that was our review of Lightyear. We hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time on Chicken Bros. To infinity. Infinity and <laughs>